Recording in progress. After a little bit of a hiatus uh, from making some videos, I'm back at it. And uh, I have this guy to thank for that, dragging me out of the YouTube video closet. So YouTube friends and family, say hello to Mr. Jason Malloy. How we all doing out there? I guess I should have told you to say hi to them. So uh, why is it that we're on this call tonight, Jason? Why would I, uh, why would I want to talk to you? I, mean, I don't know. Like seven billion people in the world. Why? Why am I talking to you? I ask that all the time. So why don't you tell the folks? <laughs> well, the reason I'm talking to you is because you are the ringleader. The uh, I, I got a mental image of you with a chair in one hand and a, a whip in the other. The circus leader of uh, a group called the Extra Pint Crokinole Club. And anybody who's online and, and seeing anything about the fun stuff that goes on is probably at, at least heard of your club. But yeah, Jason is the uh, the fearless leader of that club and the organizer of a tournament that if you don't know, you need to know. And uh, yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about your club, Jason, how it started and, and this U.S. Open tournament that we should be fired up about. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we me and, uh, well, I searching through youtube i watched disc golf videos and uh came across something with this this board this weird board with a circle in the middle and pegs and i got kind of annoyed i'm like what what is this you know so i, I tuned in it was a crokinole center video and uh you know before i know it i got a board at my house uh not a willard or a tracy board but just something off the internet and uh, i invited some friends over to play uh one during during uh football sunday and of course, just like everyone else, instantly hooked. Uh, word spread around. We started playing in my shed out in the backyard. Word starting to spread. A lot of people wanted to play at once. So I said, okay, let's start a league. And uh, I used to, I've always done uh, managed softball teams and dart league and such like that. So I kind of knew how to like, you know, ha have a league schedule and like, you know, basically knew the format of a league uh, that I wanted to do with Crokinole. And league started there was 12 of us you know a year later um there was like 24 of us 20 to 24 we had to move down to the legion uh local legion hall in our town and uh it just keeps spreading from there and then you know more and more people were just more enthusiastic about it and you know we're just uh my club is a uh it's just like how we like to play uh crokinole which is just like you know in the backyard ish with you know a few beers a few cocktails you know some uh some rowdy behavior and uh also some just good fun i i have often been guilty of telling people that your club is called the extra pint crokinole club for a reason <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's uh, that's definitely we, our trophy actually is a 32 ounce yard and yep. uh, you know this but um you haven't drank from the from the cup yet that's weird that's a bit of a zinger there, but not yet. I have not drank from the championship yard, but what are the right. 20 days, 20, 19 days? Yeah, we'll see. You know, that, that'd be nice. Maybe, maybe we'll let you hold it because, uh, you know, if you have to win an extra pint tournament to have lifetime rights to it. And uh, traditionally, you know, it's we're, we're more of a doubles club. So traditionally, you and your teammate, whoever win, has to finish that that uh, 32 ounce is of we usually put double ipa is the, is the tradition for some reason because we're just you know the way we are you got to drink it within you know a, a certain amount of time for it for the you know for the win to be sealed and you know written in history right okay well i look forward to that challenge the 32 ounces because uh my partner this year is uh, very much not he's not a real big drinker and he said to me he said jeremy when we win because he's smart. He knows what's up. He says, when we went <laughs> drinking that yard is pretty much on you. And I'm like, Hey man, I'm here for you. I'll take one for the team. So uh, yeah, we're kind of talking around it. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this, uh, this tournament we keep talking about. Right. So um, this is the second uh, running of the U S open. That's our uh, clubs tournament. Um, we have several like in, in club tournaments a year, but this is the one that we like to invite everyone to. Um, it started out with just us, um, you know, wanting to know, we know that we loved Crokinole, right? And we, we thought there'd be, you know, we wanted to see who else was out there, uh, or in the surrounding area in the Northeast and beyond that would, uh, that wanted to play. So that was the first reason why we put this tournament on. 
Uh, and you know, the, the first year we did, it was a great success. You know, we met, you guys came down, you and, uh, Hutch daddy and, uh, the beerlings came down. We, we had a lot of, uh, other local contingent and, uh, you know, all around the Northeast and even Texas. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a, it's basically what it is. It's a, it's a doubles tournament. It's a competitive doubles tournament, uh, that, I don't know. It's it's just something that break that it's more of a celebration of Crook and all than it is an actual tournament. Uh, it's high level play, but I don't know. It's it, it works. It works. It works in both ways, I guess. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, one of the memories I have of being down there, and I think it was 2019, was the first time the U.S. Open ran. And like say, Hutch Daddy and myself, Andrew Hutchinson was my partner. We were the Canadian cue balls and the Beerling Brothers. We drove down there. But I remember afterward that you came to us and you're like, hey, man, it's my first tournament, first Kroganol tournament I've run. And the four of us have played in lots and lots and lots of competitive NCA tournaments. And you came to us afterwards and was like, listen, what could I have done better? How could I make this better? And all of us were like, dude, like you knocked it out of the park. You did a bang up job. Yeah, just everything about it. Fantastically run. Um, yeah, just a great group of Kroganol players. We felt super welcomed. Um, other than the people that were swearing at us because the Canadians come down and, and, and won, but uh, the beerlings were a little more winning than the, the Canadian cue balls, but it was just, just an amazing time. And I've been itching to get back there for the next U S open for about three years. So here we are in 19 days. Yeah. Tell me about it. We were, we we're really anxious too. And cause uh, you know, right before we were all set and ready to go. And then, you know, the lockdown started right before 2020 tournament and uh you know, we bought all this stuff for the tournament. We didn't kind of get to use it. So now we get to, we get to, you know, use it. Shirts and pint glasses and all sorts yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So, but yeah. What, what's your registration looking like for this year? I know in, in conversation, you've mentioned teams coming from some really cool places. So what, what do you got? What do you got for yeah. teams coming? We have uh, another, another Texas team coming. We have, we just have, uh, we have signups from Maryland team from south carolina from maryland or i said maryland already <laughs> uh rhode island uh you know our friends down at the brooklyn croco club are coming over we have uh two other new york teams from the southern tier um Crokinole club showing up um that's all i could think of right now i'm probably missing a couple but and we have a lot of uh, you know the extra point uh local guys too so yeah, yeah and uh we're so excited to meet everyone that, that comes and like, you know, plays in our tournament. Yep. Like that, like I was trying to explain before, like, that's what we want. We want like people to come, we want to meet uh, other enthusiasts and, you know, from, you know, Canada and, uh, and especially the United States, you know, because it's starting to catch on around here. Obviously, you know that. And, uh, Oh yeah. Good to form a you know, community within, you know, the, you know, the United States and more importantly up here on the East coast. Yeah. I remember the last time, uh, like Nick was there from New Hampshire and I think there was four players come over from Boston. So yeah, just really cool to, to meet people. The people from Boston I've met once or twice at the world Crokinole championships in Tavistock. But, uh, I think that was, that was probably, yeah, that would have been the first time meeting Nick. So it's one of those things, the same as you meeting the guys coming over from Brooklyn, you see them online, even have conversations with them, but to get to meet in person and sit across the table from them and, and play, play the greatest game on earth is a pretty cool way to spend a Saturday. So, Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah especially, you know, yeah. That's the, and that's another thing too. Like why wouldn't you want to come and just like, you get to spend the whole day playing Crokinole, you know what I mean? And that night after, after the finals, you know, yeah. so. And even you know the day, the night before we have a, we have a little get together too for all the visiting teams, and uh, and whatnot we all get together and uh, you know have a few few drinks something to eat and uh, yeah. play some interesting games right crokinole and some uh, variations of crokinole yeah I heard, like as as much as I enjoy tournaments and the competitive and the and the great tournament you put on I I had some great memories from the Friday night the social playing the whole survivor tournament. And then even Saturday night after the finals, there was a lot of games going on and got to play with some different players and play with different partners. Cause throughout the tournament, you have the same partner, but yeah, partner with different people in the evening and, and have some fun. Just, yeah, just some real fun playing broken So yeah. So uh, there's still room left. Oh, there, yeah, there, there's room left. Um, 
you know, registration closes uh, the, the May 14th, like a hard close. Then we got to start getting prepared. Yep. Everything's, yep. Uh, you know, uh, if you're interested, uh, maybe I'll send Jeremy a link or something with the, it's a registration form. Just register and then uh, we'll get back to you. And then uh, there's a process you have to do to complete your registration. So, yep. but yeah. But uh, I do want to ask you something, too. Like, I hope to experience this this year. The finals from our tournament, we have our tournament, the round robin and the single elimination um, <laughs> tournament is in one location at our American Legion in Voorheesville. Yes. And the finals is at uh, our, spo- our other sponsor's uh, venue, which is Indian Letter, Indian Letter Farm Cider and Brewery. Yep. And during that final, okay, like the, from me being in the crowd, and yelling uh, at, at you and the Beerlings and, and Hutch and all that, you know, in, in good spirits and good fun. What was that like to be on that final table compared to other final tables? I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And I mean, I, as competitive as I am, I feel pressures in, in any game that, that matters. I feel pressure. Um, and I've been to, I've been to a semifinals and finals at uh, in NCA tournaments and like Roy Campbell and I, a few years ago, placed second in competitive doubles at Worlds. Uh, you know, we played in some high pressure matches, but for some reason, there at Indian Ladder Firms, it was a whole nother level of pressure when you get on the microphone and say, okay, if they hit a 20, we drink. If they miss, we boo. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and, that was. Uh, yeah, it was, I loved it. It was it was just a blast. And I mean, yes, it was so good natured. Go, it was just fun, but it was a different a different atmosphere. Like, I mean, a lot of times here, the tournaments are in a in a church basement or something like that, and that's great, that's cool. Um, but this one to be able like we're sipping on a beer while we're playing in the finals and uh, music playing and and yeah, I think do you have uh, do you have walkout songs this time? Yep. So um, I didn't make it to the registration form, but um, we will ask people like when they, you know, begin start round robin play um, in the beginning of uh, the tournament, what you want your walkout sound to be when you go into the finals. And you don't have to worry about that. But, uh, you know, I got my song picked out for my team. Maybe, you know, somebody else. But you don't have to worry about that, right? What song would it be? But it, let's, not- let's say the finals what are you gonna what is it gonna be i'm not worried about it uh you know it, when uh when we, when i initially signed up the the plan was for my oldest son reed to be my partner so uh, i had told him i wanted the song by classified oh canada and, and he didn't really love that now i've got uh, i've got a new partner ron so um yeah him and i are gonna have to put our heads together but we've got a bit of a car ride down there that we can we can debate that and come up with uh, what it's going to be. I want it to be a song that you enjoy as you're in the crowd. Yeah. Watching. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't even really need to be one that intimidates you because it's not like you're going to be there. At the <laughs> like I don't have to, you know, any, I don't need to worry about psychological warfare with you. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know who it'll be. Maybe chat. And, I don't see. know. I, I, you know, when you comment, when you commentate my game, you know, in the finals with somebody that's that's just going to be great and then we can you know maybe yeah. uh <laughs> i'll t- i'll take the I'd, I'd love to do commentary on it. i mean i love talking about myself in the third person right? oh yeah yeah, yeah. It's, we gotta do live commentary yeah i'll do live commentary yeah i usually do have a bit of a running commentary when i'm playing but uh, and some of that needs to be bleeped out but uh, but yeah, no, I'll definitely I'll get all the details from you and post it in the description under this video, how people can get a hold of you. And uh, yeah, I know last weekend when I was in Boston at PAX, I had the flyer out on the table. There was a number of people snapping pictures of it like, yeah, we should go there. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure if you've seen any new registrations from that, but there was some there was some decent players there. I'm like, yeah, get over there, meet these guys, have some fun. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got we got some emails from people that attended PAX just wondering about the club because there's actually a couple of people that are pretty local. So that's all right on. Yeah. Thank you very much for doing that. Oh. But yeah. yeah. yeah and also uh, for people like, you know, some people are still kind of like around here in the club kind of hesitant, like, well, I don't know how well I'm going to do. And I'm like, well, it doesn't matter, man. Like, you know, like it's all about 
first of all, anyone can win this tournament, to be honest with you. I know there's some higher level players in it and stuff and, you know, you know, super hardcore enthusiasts are playing, but I don't know. Right, Jeremy? Like everyone can get in there. It's everyone plays at least you got at least 11 uh, four round round robin games you're going to be playing. So you're, you're guaranteed so much croak and all that yeah. after the robin, there's a single elimination tournament based how you did on the round robin. That's how you're seated. Yeah. And you never know, man. Like there's a Cinderella story out there. Even if you like win a couple rounds, you're, you can win it, win in the money and all that stuff. I don't yeah. know. It was, uh, was it the last year that the worlds ran? It was either 2018 or 2019 guy by the name of Darren Carr came out of nowhere. Like I had seen him at one or two tournaments. He was decent, but uh, like out of nowhere, made top 16, made the top four. And next thing he's in the finals against Justin Slater, giving him a run for his money. And it was like, where did this guy come from? Um, yeah. I mean, he's a great player. Bar. What's that? <laughs> he came from the bar that we were at lunchtime when we got <laughs> The doubles. We were we were over with him and his uh, curling club, just hanging out and having a great yeah. time before yeah. singles. Super guy. Um, but yeah, and I mean, I, I I say to new people coming to a tournament, like especially if it's a, if it's a really competitive tournament, that you may have a couple of games. Like if you're newer, you may have a couple of games where you're playing against top level guys that you may not. Yeah, you, you may kind of get smacked around a little bit as far as the score goes. But, I mean, you can either look at that and go, oh, no, I'm getting beat. Or you can look at that going, what can I learn? What can I learn that I then take in the next match? And I guarantee, I mean, most people are going to have some matches against people that at their level that uh, can be genuinely competitive. And, uh, yeah, you're either going to win or you're going to learn. Uh-oh. Did I, did I lose you? Ah, there I, you're back again. That anyway, so. What's that? My phone's dying, so. And, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, all good. Well, thanks for taking the time. I can see you're in your car, so I know you're squeezing this in around family time and whatnot. So uh, I appreciate you doing this with me and and helping spread the word about this. And hopefully, hopefully, we'll see some new registrations for you. And whoever they whoever registers, I look forward to meeting you in person. Yeah, cool. Well, thank you. So. I mean, really, thank you for taking the time and uh, yeah. talking. Yeah, but, I mean, if nothing else, maybe uh, you know, uh, people will just show up to watch me in the finals. Well, they can, yeah, well, they can have a beer with you while you're watching the finals. That's great, you know. We can set something up like that. But uh, also, I forgot to tell people, too, that we're, you know, we're raffling off a uh, Tracy Tour board, a custom Tracy Tour board that uh, has U, uh, U.S. Open 2022 on it. It's a beautiful blue ditch, red center. Jeremy's going to sign it. The board maker's going to sign it. And the winners of the tournament. So, so I get to sign it twice. Uh, no, no, no. Just once, buddy. Just once. <laughs> All right. Again, seven billion people in the world. Why did I choose to talk to you? I don't. I mean, if they go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. I should. I should have got somebody. I should have gone call with somebody who believes in me. And it's just. Oh, man, like, I, I do believe. You. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Always a pleasure. I'll let you go before your phone dies. And yeah, as quick as I can, I'll get this edited. Get it up, uh, get it blasted out to the YouTube world, and yeah, let even more people know in case they've been under a crocodile rock and don't know that this tournament's happening. They will now. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Awesome, man. Make it a great day. Bring your uh, bring your discs down too when you come down. Oh no question. Uh, all right, cool.